Hello there. Today, the video is going to be about how effective was the Fellowship of the Ring. So we all know the tale of the War of the Ring, where Eva was defeated and the line of Elendil was restored to the throne of Gondor. So 13 months prior to this event, a remarkable young hobbit embarked on a journey that would affect Middle-earth. So nine brave men from a multitude of races would set out from Rivendell to the depths of Mordor. Nine members of the Fellowship to rival the nine Nazgul. So how effective was each member of the Fellowship? Were there better people suited to the task? Well, this is what we would explore. We'll start with the person who started the Fellowship, the ring bearer Frodo Baggins. So Frodo's role was unique in the Fellowship, with him bearing the ring all the way to the fiery chasms of Mount Doom. The rest of the Fellowship had to protect and guide him. He had the task of carrying all of Sauron's hate, all of Sauron's malice, and all of Sauron's want to dominate and then destroy. So Frodo did this decently well, taking the ring into Mount Doom itself, only losing it temporarily, but ultimately the ring won. Frodo could not destroy it, the ring was too much for him. However, the films don't quite do Frodo justice, not properly showing just how long the ring had to wear down Frodo. So Frodo got his ring on his 33rd birthday, and 17 years later he set out to Rivendell. Could anyone have done it any better? Well, Samwise Gamgee springs to mind. He was being able to surrender the ring back to Frodo and defeat the temptation that corrupted others. But would Sam have actually been able to destroy the ring instead of just giving it to his friend? Unknown. But I would like to think so. so. Could anyone else have succeeded? I think not, because the three wielders of the Elven Rings of Power, one knew she would succumb to the ring, one feared the ring so he refused to bear it, and the third had other business to see to. Therefore, Frodo was almost certainly the best person to be the ring bearer, especially because, with a little bit of hindsight, it did work, and the ring was destroyed. So what about Sam, you might ask, the hobbit who actually gave up the ring? Surely he would be a better ring bearer. Sure. But I would make the case that his role is to support Frodo to the bitter end. So as Sam puts it, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. So talking about how great Sam is could easily fill this video, and if you've seen the films or read the books, you already know that Sam is great. So was Samwise Gamgee an effective member of the Fellowship? Of course he was. Frodo wouldn't have got far without Sam. So Sam was Frodo's gardener, Frodo's cook, and most importantly, Frodo's friend, giving Frodo the strength to endure. The rest of the Fellowship had a slightly different role, and this role was protection. And now it's time to evaluate the rest of the little folk. So the Two untrained combatants were Merry Duck Brandybuck and Peregrine Tuck. So these two were probably the weakest members of the Fellowship, uh, physically speaking, and although they would go on to do great deeds, like stabbing the Witch King of Angmar, and becoming a Knight of Gondor, I think it's safe to say that during the time of the Fellowship of the Ring, these two were not the most effective choice. Even Elrond didn't think it wise to send two hobbits all the way to Mordor, but then Gandalf persuaded him otherwise. Who would I have replaced these hobbits with? I don't think replacing was actually possible, as they were adamant to follow Frodo and Sam. But did they really contribute to the Fellowship? I think not. Now we're on to Gimli and Legolas. So these two formed a great friendship uh, throughout the duration of the Fellowship, with Gimli being the only dwarf to actually leave Middle-earth, sailing into the Undying Lands with Legolas. So how effective were these two members of the Fellowship? So Legolas brought range to combat, being from Mirkwood, where the elves could hit a bird's eye in the dark, meaning Legolas was definitely an effective member with his uh, combat abilities. So Gimli too was a great combatant, wielding an axe to great effect in the Battle of Helm's Deep, the Mines of Moria, and other battles. So how good were these two in combat? Well, Legolas slew 42 orcs at the Battle of Helm's Deep, which wasn't bad to a pointy-eared elven prince, but Gimli himself was sitting happy on 43. Gimli and Legolas's role was to protect the Ring Bearer, and with their battle prowess, they definitely were effective members of the Fellowship of the Ring. Aragorn, instead of Arathorn, is probably the most skilled member of the Fellowship, so of course he was an effective addition. So Aragorn was a ranger, so he could survive in the wild, could use a bow or a sword to defeat many foes. So Aragorn was a natural leader, uh, he led the hobbits to Rivendell, and then he also led the Fellowship after they travelled through the mines of Moria, and then also led Legolas and Gimli to rescue uh, Merry and Pippin. There were nine members of the Fellowship to rival the nine Nazgul, suggesting that each member should be able to face a Nazgul. Aragorn faced five of them, whilst protecting Frodo, 
showing off his skill with a blade. So Aragorn had physical strength, which he showed in combat, but he also had a mental and emotional strength. He was able to resist the ring, unlike the other human in the Fellowship, and we'll get to him later, and Aragorn was also humble. Humble enough to not take the ring and destroy it himself, knowing his own limitations, which would, I'd say, make Aragorn probably the best member of the Fellowship. So now we will move on to that other man, Boromir, son of Denethor. So in terms of physical power and combat prowess, Boromir obviously holds his own, being a fine captain of Gondor, surviving battles at Osgiliath, and he also had a noble heart, sacrificing himself for the little ones, and also wanting the ring for the sole purpose of protecting his people. So in terms of actually protecting the ring bearer, Boromir did a decent job, until temptation prevailed. So the mightiest man may be slain by one arrow. Boromir was pierced by many, showing that Boromir was a great warrior. So Boromir had the physical capabilities to be an effective member of the Fellowship, so unlike the Hobbits, and also, unlike the Hobbits, lacked the mental strength to fight off the ring, and this was his downfall. His desire to be Gondor's saviour, and his trust in physical strength, allowed the ring to tempt him. Because the ring had power over him, we cannot call Boromir an effective member of the Fellowship. So who would have been a better choice? Well, Faramir, son of Denifer, would have been my pick. So Faramir may not have been as technically gifted with a sword, but the ring didn't have power over him, and this was shown by Faramir letting Frodo and Sam on their way. So if only Faramir went to Elrond instead of Boromir, things may have been different. So our final member of the Fellowship is Gandalf the Grey. So Gandalf was probably the wisest member of the Fellowship, as he discovered where the ring of power was, and he also guided the Fellowship until his uh, untimely demise in Moria. So Gandalf wasn't just able to use magic to assist the Fellowship, he was also a able swordsman wielding Glamdrig, and he was able to slay a Balrog of Morgoth. So like Aragorn, having Gandalf in the Fellowship is a no-brainer, as he is skilled in surviving the wild, and also knows his own weaknesses, daring not to take the ring in case it corrupted him. And therefore, Gandalf was an effective member of the Fellowship, having the wisdom and trust of Elrond to allow uh, Pippin and Merry along, and also having the skills needed to defend Frodo from the Nazgul. So, there we have it. The nine members of the Fellowship of the Ring evaluated, with most being effective members, two lacking the uh, physical strength to properly protect the Ring Bearer, and one lacking the mental strength to protect himself from the Ring's power. So ultimately, the Fellowship worked as Frodo succeeded in his quest, although this was more due to Sam than the rest of the Fellowship. So one reason the Fellowship was nine members was to rival the nine Nazgul, whilst also being able to stealthily carry the ring to Mount Doom. So this, this makes sense, so they couldn't equal Sauron's might, so a subtle approach was needed. However, surely 10 or 12 members would have been more effective without compromising the stealth approach. So with these numbers, the Fellowship would still be small enough to avoid unwanted attention, but there would also be some more skilled hands, which are needed to especially to make up for the Hobbit's lack of fighting skill. So, who might we add to the Fellowship, you might ask? Well, out of the obvious additional members could have been Glorfindel, Emma Sevia de Valar, and Elendal and Elra here, sons of Elrond. So these guys had great strength and experience in surviving, so would have been welcome additions. So in the book, uh, Glorfindel also delivers Frodo to Rivendell, escaping the Nazgul, so he would definitely have increased the might of the Fellowship without compromising its mission. So, thank you very much for watching. So hopefully you agree with uh, my thoughts on the Fellowship of the Ring and its members. So if not, please let me know. Please let me know who you'd put in the Fellowship of the Ring instead. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you again very soon.